So we have had very beautiful experience of Vibhuti Yoga. Now we are going to enter the Sanctum Sanctorum. But before that, you know, in many of the temples, there are Upadevatas whom we worship. So we saw some of them there, but still I feel we have to do a little more prostrations. Unless we do that, the full implication of the 11th chapter, Vishwarupa Darshana, may not enter into us. So let us do with a very, very humble prayer <clears throat> some prostrations before we enter the sanctum sanctorum. First and foremost, let us prostrate before the great seers of India who through direct meditation they were able to really enter into the truth of their being, the final ultimate truth. So let us prostrate to all those great seers. Then there were many great sages, rishis, munis, who thought the erring man cannot understand this ultimate truth. So let us make stories out of them without losing the essence of it. They made stories in Puranas and Itihasas, like Sage Vatmiki, Vasishta, Vishwamitra, so on and so forth. Vyasa Bhagavan, of course. So, let us prostrate to those great sages because, but for them, you know, we could not have come anywhere near this <coughs> great temple at all. And last but not the least, we have to make some more prostrations to those great scientists like Albert Einstein, Eisenberg, so on and so forth, innumerable modern scientists, as well as philosophers like Julian Huxley, for trying to understand the Indian spiritual science and through their understanding, replenish the scientific concepts of today's material science and bring it nearer to the threshold of Indian spiritual science. So these are the three groups I felt we should take their blessings before we enter into the sanctum sanctorum. You see, when you give a toy to a child to play with, he is very happy. But after some time, he wants to break it open to see how it is working. It is clapping its hands. It is moving his eyes. But how is it all possible? <clears throat> he wants to break open the toy and see it. Similarly, Arjuna's curiosity after visualizing the power centers in the Vibhuti Yoga discussion, he wanted to see the actual functioning of these great masters, personalities, divine beings who control the functions and create this universal parasparya. With great humility, Arjuna puts before us puts before Krishna, prays to him to reveal to him the cause behind the effect. The masterminds who manage the multitude of his universal family departments and their interactions which create the universal parasparya. 
Arjuna knows that it is a very, very uh, impossible request he is making. So humbly he adds, Krishna, I would like to see it, but of course I know my weaknesses, my incapacity to hold on to this vision. So in case you think it is possible for me to visualize this, Krishna, please be kind enough to show me, Krishna, you are that wonderful universal form. Here, Arjuna has come as a spokesman for the whole humanity. But for Arjuna's request, we should could not have requested Krishna for such a show. He would not have bothered also to answer to us. But Vyasa, on behalf of the humanity, made Arjuna put a prayer to Sri Krishna, O oh Lord, if it be possible, if I am worthy of that vision, please, Krishna, show me that wonderful, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent form of yours. Thus requested, slowly, the finite form of Sri Krishna started expanding and filling up the whole area. It touched the sky. It filled up all the quarters. There was nothing left there. Such an amazing spectacle. World had never seen it before. But even in the Mahabharata context, war context, who all must have seen it? Of course, it was shown to Arjuna, so Arjuna has really seen it. Vyasa had given the gift of divine vision to Sanjaya, so he must have seen it. Probably Bhishma Pitamaha, who was standing in front and listening to that divine dialogue, probably he has seen it too. Did Hanuman, who was on the flag of Arjuna, did he wake up from his meditation on Sri Rama? To have a glimpse of this, we don't know. Probably he would have. Anyway, within seconds of Sri Krishna deciding to show the Vishwarupa, the whole atmospheric gallery was filled with all the divine forms. Devas, Gandharvas, Kinnaras, everybody. Because the great Na Rishi Narada he had very quickly sent a WhatsApp message to each and every one of them. Come, something grand is going to take place. Don't waste your time. Don't worry about your makeup or dress or code of God. Nothing. Come, come, hurry up, hurry up. Fill up, fill up the place. No empty seat anywhere. Fill up the whole area. So the whole atmospheric gallery was filled with divine forms. And Krishna started evolving into this universal form. And we don't know because we have, we cannot even imagine in our mind such a form. Anyway, let us see how Sanjaya explains it. Sanjaya was also standing by and observing what is happening so that he has to report it to Dhritarashtra. Sanjaya also suddenly saw 
दिवि सूर्य सहस्र से भवेदुगपदुत्थित यदि भाषी सासस्त महात्म इफ ए थाउजेंड सन्स वर टू ब्लेज फोर्थ टूगेदर इन दिस स्काय दे वुड नॉट मैच दि स्प्लेंडर ऑफ दैट ग्रेट फॉर्म ऑफ श्री कृष्ण It was blazing light. Our great Narayana Bhatta, the author of Narayaniyam, after completing ninety-nine chapters of Narayaniyam, he could get rid of the rheumatic ailment, and he was looking at the Sri Krishna's. Vigraha in the Guru Ayur Temple. Suddenly he found a grape asya mitejo nibida taragala ya vali lo bhaniyam. First he sees the immense prabha, the light, the prakasha, the vi surya sahasrasya. Even one sun we cannot look at him. Except in the early morning or late evening, Surya Sahasrasya. So the whole world, who could have kept their eyes open to see this? That is how the first vision comes. At this point, this particular sloka has got a modern connotation. When the atomic scientist. Robert Oppen Oppenheimer. He was watching the explosion of the first atom bomb over Hiroshima from far, far, far away from a plane. He wanted to describe it to the world. You know, he searched for some words, some expressions he couldn't get, but suddenly from his mind came this. गीता स्टंस दिव्य सूर्य सहस्रस भवे जुगपद उत्थिदा यदि भास सदृशी सस्यात भासस्तस्य महात्मन नाउ लेट अस कंपेयर व्हाट ओपेनहाइमर सॉ द एटॉमिक एक्सप्लोजन व्हिच लेड टू द डेथ एंड डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ Thousands and thousands of thousands of human beings, animals, plants, and Earth itself. The effects of which are continuing to torment the world. That is the science contribution. And what is Krishna's contribution? This divine universal form. projected by shri krishna thousands of years ago is still a source of wonder inspiration and insight leading to prayerful submission of millions of hindus in fact my first acquaintance with bhagavad gita started by getting by heart this particular 16 or 17 So, uh, slokas by which Arjuna prays to Sri Krishna. Pashyami devam stava deva dehe sarvam stadha buddha vishesha samkhan brahmana mesham kamala sanastam rishim sa sarvan vragam sa divyan. That is how Arjuna starts. when the prakasha became when it became possible for the eyes to see through that wonderful blazing light he could locate what ever was there in that form which other spiritual tradition could have dared such a universal presentation of unity in diversity transcending space time cause and effect condensing the whole universe into one 
and the one expanding into many. All going on simultaneously. Aham Brahmasmi to Isha Sarvam. Nowhere but in the Bhagavad Gita can we find such a universal canvas depicting not only forms but also actions. Simultaneous creation, dissolution with everything in between. No wonder Arjuna lost himself in the immensity and the immeasurability of that vision. All he could do was to fall at the feet of Sri Krishna and words automatically started pouring out of his mind. We can only try to capture what Arjuna, through the praises Arjuna made about Krishna's Rupa, through that only we can understand, just as we I read now, Brahmana, Misham, Kamala, Sanastam, Rishim, Sarvan, Varakamsha, everything was covered, starting from Brahma, Isha, Rishis, Uragas, everybody you can think of as part of creation, they were all there. All the Vibhudis which he had heard, heard earlier. They were all presented there, convincing Arjuna of the oneness and parasparya of which Sri Krishna had elaborated in his earlier discussion. As he watched, Arjuna saw to his great surprise not only the army of Kauravas, but also that of Pandavas, wandering into the death trap of the Lord's mouth and getting crushed there. Arjuna's prayerful submissions are the only clues we get out of this unusual heavenly spectacle. Immediate effect of Arjuna seeing all this Birth on one side, death, death on one side. Creator on one side, destroyer on the other side. All sorts of ornaments you could think of, they were all presented there. All sorts of weapons, missiles you could think of, they were all held by these gods in their hands. He could not bear that sight. He cries out, Oh Krishna, who are you? Ugra Rupa, this sort of a Rupa of yours, I have never seen. I am afraid. I am shivering with fear. Please Krishna, come back. Enough. Enough of this spectacle. Come back to your old self. Vishwarupa. When we hear that, we remember Mother Yashoda. How one day she asked Krishna whether he had eaten mud, earth. Krishna says, no, Mama, I don't have that habit. This brother of mine and my friends, they are always talking ill about me to you, isn't it? You see yourself, can you find out one particle of soil in my mouth? Here, come, Mama, come. And he opens the mouth. And there Mother Yashoda saw the whole universe with herself and Krishna standing there face to face. Was it a dress rehearsal? Krishna was practicing. Or again in the Kaurava royal sabha, just before the war, when Krishna went as a messenger, that crooked Duryodhana wanted to tie him up. At that moment, Krishna developed his gigantic Vishwarupa form and 
Duryodhana and others, they could not look at him. They all fell down. And Krishna coolly walked out of the Rajasabha. That was another Vishwarupa. But those were nothing when compared to this Vishwarupa, which took place in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. As a blessing to Arjuna for his humility, for his surrender, for his shishyatva, for his love, the gift Krishna felt that he could give to his friend to make him once again the warrior, to remove the klaibhya from him, to remove the karpanya doshas from him, out of that immense love for his Arjuna, Krishna considered to show this cosmic form of his. Arjuna felt so thrilled. He felt exalted. And Arjuna was thinking, how is it Krishna found me worthy of this vision? His mind went back. Maybe as Naranarayana, we were together. Does he remember all that? Or is it from the very beginning of creation that Jivatma Paramatma Aikya is that which is dominating in Krishna's mind? Anyway, through this vision, he has made me realize the meaningful idea of his. Yomam pasyati sarvatra sarvam chamai pasyati tasyaham na pranasyami sachame na pranasyati Yes, now I understand. There is not even an iota of material. No being in this whole universe which is not reflecting the vibration of this great master craftsman, this master magician. He bows before him. He remembers Sarva Bhuteshu Yenaikyam Bhava Mavve Mikshati Avibhaktam Vibhakteshu Vibhaktam Ivisasidam. He understood the meaning of the true knowledge. That knowledge we see, avibhaktam vibhakteshu, tat jnanam sattvigam vidhi sattvigam. That knowledge, to be in the mode of goodness by which a person sees the undivided imperishable reality within all diverse living beings. to make me understand this simple elementary universal truth, the amount of strain Krishna has taken. Oh God, how can I thank you for this? At this moment, Krishna wants to remind him that don't be enchanted by these forms of mind. There is another version Kalosmi loka kshekrat pravruddho Lokan samahartumiha pravrutta Look Arjuna, this is all right for you to worship, but I am not that alone. Please remember, I am that great time. I am that great time. For what I have come, to consume this whole universe when it goes out of tune with dharma. Rite pitvam na bhavishyanti sarve evasta evastita pratyanike shuyotha. Arjuna, I want you to understand 
all these yodhas whom you are seeing in their fighting mood, ready to kill each other, ready to take the honor of being an archer or a great yodha, maharadha, adhiradha. All of them will be destroyed by me. Not a single person. Rite vitvam. Without, before, uh, and, and other than you, nobody will survive. Didn't you see how the Pandava Sanya and Kaurava Sanya are entering into my mouth? Because Kala Osmila Vakakshekrat Prabhuddha. I am that Kala, time, which removes everything, which wipes out, cleans the universe. When the time is up for them to remove. Are you satisfied, Arjuna, now? No more Klaibya should be in you. All that comes because you think you are the doer. Remember, Kalosmi Lokakshekrut Prabhupada. You are not the doer. You are only being my instrument to work out my idea, work out my plan of action, work out my plan of distractions of all those who are aiding the Atharma will be removed from the face of the earth. Don't be worried, Arjuna. Now I tell you, tasma tvamutishta yashole bhaswa jitva shatrun bhunkshva rajyam samriddham Therefore, Arjuna, arise, attain the honor. The honor is waiting for you because of Arjuna. The Kurukshetra war was won by the Pandavas. Conquer your foes and enjoy the prosperous rulership. Jitva Shatrun, Bhumsha, the world which the uh, Rajya which is going to come to you. After this war, enjoy it because it's the fruit of your action. Enjoy it. But remember, Nimitta Matram Bhavasavya Saji. After all the warriors are going to be annihilated, and you remain there as my instrument. This is the, we can say, the most important advice Krishna gives to Arjuna and through Arjuna to the entire humanity. Kalosmi. Nobody can stand against the whims and fancies of time. We know a small, tiny corona. The horror it has created all over the world. Kalosmi. And we have finished our Navaratri celebrations. And we have read in how many forms the Atharma tried to imprint themselves in this universe. And it was Devi herself who took various forms and annihilated them. So, Kalosmi, we need not be afraid at all. When the Adharma has come to a point, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Seklanir Pavati Bharata, Abhyuttanam Adharma Seklanam Sujamya. Bhagavan is there. Only thing is, we must know how to surrender ourselves. Rooted in Satya and Dharma. That is what we have to remember. As we work, all glory, name and fame will come to us. We have only to surrender ourselves to be the instruments, nimitta matra, instruments in Almighty's hands. Hearing these words, Arjuna somewhat regained his senses and again and again prostrated before Sri Krishna, his wonderful friend and guide. And that brought his to his mind 
in how many ways I have belittled Krishna. I was thinking Krishna is just my friend and he is my cousin, he is my brother-in-law, we are also of the same age. How many ways I have tried to belittle him. Sagedi matva prasabham yaduktam. Hey Krishna, hey Yadava, hey Sagedi, ajanata mahimanam taveda. Maya pramada prayade pranaye navapi. I never knew you are such a source of infinitude. I called you, hey Krishna, come on, let's go. Hey Yadava, hey Sakhi. In what all little, little terms I used to address this mighty being. Oh Krishna, Echavaha Sartama Salkratos, Vihara Shayasana Bhojanesh, Ego Tava Pechudatat Samaksham, Talkshamaye, Tvamaham Aprameyam. This Aprameyam unit of yours, in what all ways I sat with you. I was lying down sometimes on your bed. Oh, Krishna, I can't think of it. Please, please, please forgive me. Sri Krishna consoles him and because he said, this Ugra Ruba, I cannot sustain this vision for long. Please withdraw. Krishna starts withdrawing it and very soon comes to his normal Parthasarathi form, consoles Arjuna, but he adds one great, great advice. Arjuna, I have never shown to the world, to the universe, this form of mind. Sududarshamidham Rupam Drishtavanasi in Maya, Deva apyasya rupasya, Nityam darsana kamshina. Now we know how the atmospheric gallery was filled. Deva api, even Devas always wanted to see. Naham vedair na tapasa, na dane na na chijaya, Shakya evam vidu drishtam, Drishtavanasi maam yadha. So many rituals we do, we go to the temples, we do tirthayatras, we do so many dana dharma. But no, no, no. How is it possible to see him then? Bhaktiya. This is the another, another gem he puts down. Bhaktiya dvananya shakya aha evam vidhorjuna nyadam drashtam cha tatvena. Praveshtam Chaparantapa. You can understand about me. Maybe you can see some form. You go to Guru Ayo, like Narayana Vatartiri Pad, Agrepashyami. Maybe you can see. You can enter into me, be one with me. For that, Bhakti Atvana Nyaya Shakti. Absolutely pure surrendered bhakti. Nothing sort of that. Not even an iota of I. Not even an iota of Aham. Not even an iota of Kartrutva Bhaktrutva Bhava. Nothing should be there. Then you can straight enter into me. Mat karma krit mat parama. Mat bhakta samga varjita. Nirvaira sarva bhuteshu yaksa mameti pandava. You be, when I told you to become my nimitta, I told you to be my upadhi. How? How can you convert yourself into my upadhi mode? Mat karma krit. Do only my work. Don't have your work that I am doing, I am doing. Do only my work. Nimitta matram. Do my work. Mat bhakta samga varjit. This Sangha, this Sangha Tvain Shiladatva, be this Sangha, Nirmamo, Nirahankara, Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu, 
Krishna, you know, whenever he gets a chance, he emphasizes this point. Sarva Bhuteshu. See, understand that. That is where we are all failing. Our failure is we fail to understand that iota of divinity which is present Sarva Bhuteshu. And that I am, I am, I am. So Arjuna is consoled. To some extent, he has come back to his normal senses. And then what does he do? From the moment Arjuna surrendered to Sri Krishna and declared himself to be his disciple, Krishna was trying to expand his consciousness to visualize the uniform universe with all that it holds as his family and get rid of the foolish attachment he feels towards his earthly family connections. One by one, Sri Krishna untied the knots of his misunderstandings regarding life, death, work, relationships, true knowledge, nature of truth, step by step by we have seen it and has finally before bringing him to this door of Vishwarupa Darshana. Arjuna was theoretically absorbing all that Krishna was telling. So when he asked him to show the in reality, what he has in mind was just a laboratory demonstration. Just like we saw a something our teacher teaches us chemistry physics and takes us to the lab and showed oxygen and hydrogen mixing together. Arjuna thought it is as simple as that. All he expected of Krishna when he asked him, all he expected was a laboratory demonstration of the interrelatedness, interconnectedness and interdependencies of the universal structure. In that way, he thought all his doubts and everything will be cleared. But what Krishna showed him was something stupendous. How the whole universe is charged by his power, his divinity. And that was a moment of revelation. With that total eradication of his ego. Remember in the very first chapter I said, Hetham Stapayam Arjuna. Arjuna is telling, Hetham Stapaya, Krishna, you stop my chariot in front of those. Let me see who are all present to fight with me. The total eradication of the ego. Realization of the fact that the ego which he was holding is a zero watt bulb. <laughs> zero watt bulb. He said, no, no light at all when compared to this Divi Surya Sahasrasya. Where is Divi Surya Sahasrasya and Arjuna's zero watt ego? Everything was demolished before the immensity of the creative power of the Lord Almighty. This realization was stunningly wholesome. In the fraction of a second, the realization dawned on Arjuna that his true relations are not this short-lived bodies in front. Who had only very short time now, they are not my relatives at all. My real relatives are the universal controlling power under whose influence life eternal pulsates through every being. The ego, which was his sustaining power, till now just vanished, as also 
the doer, enjoyership, which were the pillars on which his ego was getting supported. That I am the doer, I will enjoy. The final admonition of Sri Krishna that be an instrument to uphold dharma, pumped a new energy, a new vision, a new faith, seeing as, as never before the eternal relationship between Krishna and himself. That relationship, Nimitta Matram, that was a very new relationship. He never knew, hey Krishna, hey Yadava, hey Sagedi. All that he knew, he couldn't understand. But this new relationship, Nimitta Matram, that was astounding. What are the lessons? Lessons Vishaya Yoga Darshana imparts to all of us. To lift our minds from the ephemeral to the eternal. We can sort of summarize. Otherwise, you know, we have heard of this whole of Vishwarupa and we were so absorbed in it, we forgot. Our idea is not Vishwarupa. Our idea is how this Vishwarupa Darshana can be condensed into our Amrita families. So let us not forget where we start from. So let us try to summarize. What lessons do we learn from this Vishwarupa? The whole universe with all its Units are interconnected, interrelated, and interdependent. With the universal paraspadia holding the whole together. That is the first lesson which we have to remember all the time. Secondly, the oneness of the macro family must be simulated in the micro family which we consider as our own. So this expans, expansive view, expansive understanding, all that we should try to bring into our so the Panjabada, etc, etc, etc. In whatever way we can, we have to elevate our micro family to the macro level, Vesti into the Samashti. As the whole universe is pervaded by one power in which knowledge, love and action stand united, it should be our effort to make these three meaningful and fruitful in our lives through our knowledge. We have already given sufficient emphasis on what exactly is the knowledge. Kasmin Bhagavan Vijnade Sarvamidam Vijnadam Bhavadi Knowledge of Truth Knowledge Action Transforming our Karma into Karma Yoga Bhakti Our Emotions into Bhakti Yoga So Knowledge, Action and Love have to be properly integrated in our individual and family lives. There is no place for ego. Ego will never take you anywhere. I will do it. It is my opinion. I shall do it. You listen to me. How much of energy we waste every day in emphasizing this importance of this useless I. As the whole universe works as per the direct desire control of the cosmic master, master mind, our kartritva bhuktritva have no part or if at all it is, it is infinitely small. Maybe our nitya naimitika karma, we get up, we take bath, etc. Probably those are the only places where I can, yes, I had my bath, I had my food. Even that Sri Ramakrishna never used to say. Again, to bring fulfillment, the best way is to convince ourselves 
we are only instruments in his hand nimitta matram bhava sabya saje when i joined vekanta kendra swami chinmayananda ji wrote me a beautiful small but very beautiful letter in his own hand writing in case you are feeling depressed or agitated go and shut yourself up in a room and repeat to yourself this shloka of krishna emphasizing nimitta matram bhava sabya saje you are only nimitta in the hands of the almighty all your depression will vanish that was a, from that time onwards this nimitta matram bhava sabya saje has become my watchword last but not the least to achieve the oneness with the supreme we should require uh, acquire ananya bhakti bhaktiyatva ananya krishna at the end of each of his prabhashanas you know he will put there one small question mark <laughs> so that arjuna will take up that and continue the dialogue so bhaktiyatva ananya this absolutely beautiful and pure bhakti ananya bhakti no other chinta all my attention is concentrated on that ultimate truth maybe in the form of krishna or rama or devi or shiva bhakti or pananya so that is the question mark which krishna puts before arjuna after he withdraws unto himself the beautiful form of his this cosmic gigantic cosmic form we know some of these stanzas are so absolutely beautiful the best thing is get by heart the whole of the 11th chapter otherwise let us remember this nimitta matra in our japa mala we can add this nimitta matram bhava sabya sai let it be a call of krishna to all of us whatever may be we are doing in the office or home or society or anywhere nimitta matram bhava we are just the instrument in the hands of god the great kunjan nambiar who was the propounder of oh, 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 one of the dance forms you know otten tullal in kerala like kathagali it's a simpler form otten tullal his compositions are wonderful he says we are all like the bommas the dolls in the hands of the god we will shake our hands we will shake our feet we will shake our head as per the pulling of the threads by that doll maker similarly let us remember we are only nimittas the chain of pulling us our great friend uh, professor of jyoti shastra he used to say what we are praying here is only the thing which is already written the tirakatha is already written the we are only enacting the part here the story is already written how we are going to act everything is written and kept there we are thinking that we are acting we are doing this we are doing this. so vishru padarsana should be able to eliminate from our mind not even an iota of aham bhava kartrutva bhoktrutva feelings which will condense our mind 
thinking of Visharupa, let us expand, expand, and expand, and feel ourselves as a small little form, maybe a part of a bead in an ornament which was there in the Visharupa, or a little instrument in his hand, something or other, beautiful meditations which can have with this Visharupa idea. So, with this wonderful Vishwarupa Darshana, Arjuna lost all his ego, Kartratva, Bhoktratva, and Shishyas Teham Shadhimam Tom Prabhannam became fulfilled as he prostrated at Krishna's feet. And that is the great lesson we have to impart in our Amrita Parivar so that Ahambhava, Kartratva, Bhoktratva, all those get eliminated. Maybe not in such magnificent, universal way, but in our own small little ways we can teach our children that we are all God's children. Everybody around is nothing but Bhagavan's creations, small little little base. We can bring this Vishrupa into the minds of our younger generation. And that would be a great gift we give to ourselves and an offering we give to the Vishwarupa of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Hari Om. Thank mm-hmm. you.